What's up guys? I'm really excited today. We got a little new space, a little bit nicer. Hope you all can see the board a little bit better, a uh, better marker. And today we're going to move on to the next phase of our programming. We're going from unfucking your programming to making it fucking perfect. So, a couple things off the bat. First of all, where we are right now. We've come up with this program. It's basically your, your linear progression split except we've periodized it, right? So now we have percentages. We're going to start with high volume, low intensity. We're going to move to low volume, high intensity. If you're just starting out, this is your first time with periodization, you start that, it's working. Stick with that until it stops working. Can't stress this enough. There's no reason to change something that's working. And honestly, it'll probably work for you for quite a long time. But I'm sure some of you are a little bit more advanced than that. And, you know, maybe it's still working, but maybe now it's at the point where, you know, you're, you're training in 10, 12 weeks, and you're only adding, like, 5 pounds to each lift. And that's getting a little frustrating, right? You feel like I'm putting in all this effort, all this work, so long, and I'm not really getting the results that I'd hoped for. And maybe if you're at that point, it's time to, to start changing things up a little more, even if you've already implemented some of the other things we've talked about in terms of frequency, in terms of variation. So the first one we're going to talk about is autoregulation. At its core, autoregulation is just the idea that, okay, sometimes I'm going, go, I'm going to go into the gym and I'm feeling really shitty, right? Like I'm feeling rough, I'm warming up, the bar feels heavy, 135 feels heavy, y'all have been there. And I'm like, there's no way I can hit the program sets. And if I just had the percentages that I'm working off of, it's like, well, shoot, I'm supposed to do 315 for five, there's no way I'm going to do that. So you try anyway, and you miss, and now you're like, well, fuck, now what am I supposed to do? I'm going to be thrown off for last week, or thrown off for next week, feel bad about this week, like, this just sucks. Like, what am I even going to do in my next workout? Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you go into the gym, and you're like, I feel fucking great. And you're only supposed to do 315 for five, and you crush that, and you're like, she, I could put on 365 or 5 and crush this right now, but I'm not supposed to. And so I'm just going to leave that and, you know, hope it's there another day. And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Autoregulation is just the idea that, hey, we're going to try and take advantage of that. We're going to try to respond to that, right? So on days we're feeling shitty, we're going to take a little bit extra time. On days we're feeling great, we're going to push ourselves really hard. And we're going to go, you know, maybe above and beyond what we have programmed. Autoregulation is very, very important if you want to get to the next level of sport, right? So if you're kind of at that intermediate advanced stage and you really want to get to that, that you know, top level competitor, you have to have some form of autoregulation in your training. And if you read about it online, a lot of guys will call it stuff like training by feel or instinct. And you're like, well, that just means going to the gym and do whatever I want. In reality, it's a little bit more structured than that. Some people just don't think about it that way in their heads. So when they try to explain it, it comes out a little bit differently. Now I think right now the most popular form of autoregulation auto is RPE based training. RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion. And it's essentially the idea that, okay, I'm going to go into the gym and I'm going to do a set of five with 225 or whatever. And you know, I, I really think I could have done maybe six or seven reps. And so I'm going to assign that set a number, and that number is the RPE. Most RPE scales, a, scale of, a score of 10 means you didn't have any reps left in the tank. There's no way you could have done another rep. A nine, you could have done one more. An eight, maybe you could have done two more. Some scales, it's, you know, maybe you could do two or three more, and so on, right? All the way down to one. Although, usually, you don't really go past six or seven. And you guys, you've probably seen on social media, right? Somebody cranks out a set, and you're like, oh, man, there's no way he had another. And he calls it RPE-8, or she calls it an RPE-8. And that's the whole point, is that it's perceived exertion. So, it's not really what the set looks like, although that's a component of it, and it's not really what the set feels like, that's a component of it, it's not how fast the bar moves, it's just overall you have this feel for how difficult that set is, and we're going to assign that a number so that, okay, I can, I can train using these numbers, these RPE scales, instead of a set poundage. So instead of saying I'm going to go into the gym and I'm going to try and do a set of 5 at 315, I'm going to go in the gym and I'm going to do a set of 5 at RPE 8 where, you know, I probably had two reps left in the tank. And some days that's going to be 300 pounds, and some days that's going to be 330 pounds. And a lot of guys who use RPE, a lot of successful coaches who use RPE, have a lot of other measurements that they use to add to this form of autoregulation to try and evaluate your recovery or your strength on a particular day. In theory, I think RPE is fantastic. In theory, I think RPE is almost a, a perfect way to train. The problem is, in practice, honestly, a lot of times it straight up sucks. And there are a few different reasons for that. The number one reason in my mind is that, essentially with RPE, you're trying to quantify a qualitative va value, variable. 
So a quantitative variable is something, you assign a number to it, right? I have eight eggs. A qualitative variable is like the board is white. White is qualitative, right? You can't measure white, how white is. Well, maybe you can, but it's, it's difficult to measure white. So it's the same idea with RPE, right? We're trying to assign a number to something to how difficult a set is. Well, the set was pretty hard, right? It wasn't maximal, but it wasn't easy. And if I'm saying, okay, I had two reps in the left in the tank, I'm really, most of the time, I'm just guessing. Unless I'm a very, very, very elite athlete who's very, very, very well in touch with my body, I don't know exactly how many reps I have left. And so that's kind of like the first issue with RPE is that, well, this isn't really a, a quantitative variable in the first place, even though I'm trying to push it into that box. And on top of that, you know, it's not a direct measure of what I can do. Right? So saying I have two, two reps left in the tank doesn't necessarily mean I have two reps left in the tank. And then very closely related is the idea that well, it's highly subjective, right? So we already talked about how RPE really isn't how the set looked. It's not entirely how the set felt. It's not just bar speed. It's kind of all those things put together. And that's extremely subjective. What you think is an RPE 8, somebody else might think is an RPE 10. And this is why I brought up Instagram or whatever, wherever you watch your your lifting videos, it's like, you'll see guys who are grinding on this rep for 30 seconds and they're like, oh yeah, RPE eight and a half is gonna be my opener. And you're like, all right, bro, like if that's what you think, that's what you think, but it sure didn't look that way. And so when a lot of people try and use RPE in their training, they don't know how to subjectively quantify this variable in a way that makes sense. And so they end up overshooting their RPE, right? So they're like, well, I'm supposed to do a, a set at RPE eight and that last set felt like maybe it was a seven and a half, so let me go up 20 pounds and now all of a sudden it's a 10, right? You were grinding, there's no way you had another rep. That's just as frustrating as missing your percentages, right? Missing your RPEs. So again, we're kind of getting away from, from that perfect form of autoregulation that we wanted. And then finally, RPE is variable. So what I mean by that is, for me, I'm a very, uh, very emotional lifter. So if you watch my videos, I go into the gym, I meditate before a lift, before a big set, and then I'll, you know, snort my ammonia and throw the bottle and then yell and scream and whatever before I start lifting. And that kind of psych up routine actually helps and makes a huge difference, especially in my deadlift. And you'll see other lifters who, who do very similar things or have their own routine where you can tell they're really, really getting amped up for the set. When you do something like that, it makes it much, much more difficult to judge your RPE and your level of psychological arousal, how amped up you get, that is going to affect the RPE. So say I get all amped up and I crush this weight and it's an eight, but if I hadn't gotten up, amped up and I uh, tried to do the weight as a 10. So all of a sudden now I have two variables that I have to measure, I'm trying to measure how recovered am I and then how amped up am I, and now it's really getting all messed up. Getting amped up is not the only thing that can affect RPE. If you're a stimulant junkie, you really crush those pre-workouts every time you go to the gym, which I do, then that can mess up your RPE too. Maybe it was an RPE seven because you took like a thousand milligrams of caffeine before you went to the gym, right? And took two bronchade. Or maybe it's RPE 10 because you know, you're taking a break from caffeine and you feel like you've not even woken up or out of bed and you're at the gym trying to live. So all these things at the bottom line, it's like, well, RPE is not really a perfect measure and it's not really a perfect way to get at that auto regulation that we're trying to do that on the face of it seems pretty simple. So, what do you do? There's a lot of different solutions, um, training instinctually. My, my personal preference, I use something called relative intensity. And rather than just try and explain, I'm gonna put it up on the screen so you guys can see what relative intensity chart looks like. But you can think of this almost as a form of RPE combined with percentages. And so, if I have across the top, I have the number of reps I'm doing, and down the side I have a qualitative measure of how difficult a set should be. So it's maximal or it's very heavy or heavy or whatever the case may be, moderate. And you can think of those, those uh, variables down the side. You can think of those like RPE. You can say, okay, well, maximal is RPE 10, very heavy is RPE 9, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see I can extrapolate from this chart, okay, how many, what, what weight should I be able to use roughly for a set of three that's going to be an RPE 9, right? Well, maybe it's around 87%. That's not gonna be a perfect measure for everybody. It's gonna be a little bit different for everybody, actually. And most people who use RPEs use some type of chart like this, but they use it retroactively. They do their set at their given RPE, and then they go back and look at this chart and say, well, you know, that was an RPE eight, and I did a set of five, so I could probably do, you know, that's probably about 80% of my one rep max. 
So that's not really solving any of the problems that are associated with RPE. But if you use this proactively, you say, okay, I'm going to base the percentages from my program off of this chart. Now we have a little bit more leeway to work with because you can see in all the RPEs under 10, you have a little wiggle room, right? And so an RPE, if I'm going to do a, a very heavy single, right, I know that's going to be somewhere between, you know, 95, 97 half percent, somewhere in that range. But if I go into the gym, then I know, okay, well, this is what I'm shooting for. And if I get 97.5% for a single and it's very heavy, that's great. But if I only get 95, that's fine, right? Like, I'm still in that range that I was trying to work. It's not really all that different conceptually from RPE. But in practice, it's much different because now you've eliminated these problems, right? You're no longer trying to qualify, quanti qualify anything at all, right? You're still basing your program off of percentages. It's also not subjective. You have an exact number every time you go into the gym. I know, okay, this is what number I'm going to choose, and I have a little wiggle room, right? So I know, okay, and I, when I'm doing this, I give my lifters, for the people I'm coaching, I give them 2% wiggle room. So I don't send them charts like these because they can be a little intimidating. But if I say, okay, so you've got a, a set at a set of five with 400 pounds, and I know in my head, okay, that's 80% of their one rep max, I'm saying, okay, well, you have 2% wiggle room on this, right? So you can either go up to 410, you go down to 390, and either one of those are fine, depending on how you're feeling. You just let me know afterwards. And so this chart can help you choose, okay, what should my wiggle room be on a given day? So not qualitative, not subjective, and honestly, how you're feeling is still going to be variable, right? But your performance isn't, right? You know, did I hit this number or didn't I? You still have the problem, okay, well, I wasn't even able to hit the bottom end of my range, and so that really sucks. What do I do now? And then you still have to adjust, and we'll, we'll deal with how to do that later. But it doesn't really matter if, okay, I know I have a heavy workout. I'm going to take this caffeine. Or I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to get amped up, or I'm not going to. You don't have to worry because the number's already chosen for you. So how you feel doesn't really matter. Uh, it's something I think you should track. It's a useful variable, but it doesn't have to be the be-all and end-all of your programming anymore. Now just to recap, I want to be very, very clear. In theory, I think RPE is a superior method to relative intensity. Okay, I'm not saying that theoretically or ideally that relative intensity is better. I'm just saying that for most people that I talk with, most clients that I work with, they have a very, very difficult time implementing RPE effectively. I have the same problem. I can't do it. I give myself target RPE. So I'm like, well, I'm going to do this set at this number. I'm going to do my 740 at for three or whatever. And I want it to be an RPE 9.5. But if it's not, it's not. Uh, you know, if it's less, that's fucking fantastic. If it's more, as long as I get that weight, I don't care. And I find that that's much, much more effective for most people. Now, this uh, this doesn't really help you practically, right? It's like, okay, Ben, well, I'll use relative intensity instead. That's, that's great. How do I actually use relative intensity? We'll get to that part next time about how you're going to incorporate these percentages into your program and how you're going to program for the long haul so that you can respond to kind of your changes and how your body feels from day to day. Bam. Being good at this shit.